Hey everybody, welcome to this raw review. I'm going to try to do it as best I can. Raw just ended about 30 minutes ago, or actually 25 minutes ago, if you want to call it. Um, and I thought it was an okay Raw, especially with the crowd. I mean, the London crowd wasn't as hot as the New Jersey, the post-WrestleMania Raw crowd in New Jersey, but it, it was still okay. Uh, I'm surprised that even though they are, even though it took place um, essentially around one one o'clock Pacific time here, twelve well twelve well noon and one o'clock Pacific time here, which would be about two three o'clock over in OTRS Central's area. <laughs> um, but still, it's. What what gets me, ladies and gentlemen? What what gets me about this is it was a decent RAW. Uh, two of the best matches of the night, as far as I was concerned, were Jericho and Ziggler in the six-man tag. Definitely were the two best matches. Um, but what gets me about about RAW? is, like I said, the crowd wasn't as hot as the post-WrestleMania crowd, but it was semi-hot. And it kind of gave you an idea of what they felt, how they felt about certain things. And it pretty much, you know, it, it, it's pretty much something that, you know, I think uh, uh, Jeff Siegel, the select daddy, pointed out on the OTR Central tonight in their review. And, you know, Mike's talked about it there. I'm sure the British Fist have talked about it. I'm sure the Renegades of Wrestling have talked about it. It's it's more along the lines of essentially here you have this feud for the WWE Championship between John Cena and Ryback, and and the way people look at it, it's like you know why is this feud even happening? I mean, we understand you need to have Cena defend the title against somebody at Extreme Rules, but why Ryback? You know, why does it have to be, why does Ryback have to be the heel? Why does, you know, why couldn't it just be like with Rock and Cena? Why can't it just be face to face? Face versus fa baby face versus baby face. I mean, essentially, if you think about it, when you think about it, you know, back in 2002, you essentially had baby face against baby face two months in a row. You did. You, you had the Rock and Hogan facing each other at Mania. Now you might say, well, Hogan was supposed to be the heel. Shit. 2002 WrestleMania 18? Hogan was no damn heel in the Sky Dome that night. He was a fucking babyface. The Rock, who was the babyface, was being booed. True, it was in favor of Hogan, but as the match went on and everything, Rock was getting cheered too. So essentially, you had babyface against babyface. And then what happened? The follow-up pay-per-view, which was Backlash, you had Hogan against Triple H. Both baby faces. So why couldn't we get that now? And that was during the fucking, the, during the tail end of the of the Attitude Era, when that happened. That was the, those matches were at the tail end of the Attitude Era when that happened. So why couldn't we fucking get them now? Huh? Why couldn't we fucking get something like that right now with Ryback and Cena? We got it at Mania with Rock and Cena. Why not with Ryback and Cena? You know, it doesn't make sense. And again, it begs me to ask the question that I asked in my own Triple Threat video. And you can watch that here on my channel. But basically, the question is, how long is this... No, it's not my own Triple Threat video. It's more of my Two Big Questions video. My Two Big, two big WWE Questions video. That's where you can find it. But basically, my question is, it begs the question again, and ask again, I should say, is, how long is this Ryback heel turn going to last? I mean, are they essentially going to do a Shawn Michaels with Ryback? That they did back in, what, 05? Is that what they're going to do? Essentially have Ryback turn heel just for this pay-per-view and after the match, whether it's win or lose, go back to being a babyface? Doesn't make sense, folks. I mean, I understand because of the Rock's injury, they can't do Rock Cena 3 and extreme rules. They can't do it. So that's why we're getting less than a Triple H3. You know, it's better than nothing. 
But still, I do understand that. You know, the fans, they you could tell that unless Ryback did what he did tonight, and that's insult the fans, call him stupid and stuff like that, unless he continuously does that, and let's say they change his theme song up, which they probably will from, Ryb from Feed Me More to Ryback Rules, which I think they're leading towards if they continue to have him as or well, continue to try to force him down as a heel. Uh, I, I just I just don't see this lasting long. And the fans are too smart to buy it. I mean, if you really want to get right back over as a heel, you need to have him do some heelish things. Some real heelish things besides insulting the crowd. You know, you, you need to have him do things that would really get everybody booing him. Would get them all from stop saying feed me more. I just don't know what they got, what they're planning to do, because it, it really doesn't make any sense for for Ryback to and Cena to be doing good versus bad, good versus evil situation. I mean, like I said, if you could do what you did with Rock and Cena for Mania, if you could do what you did in the past with Rock Hogan and Rock Triple H, you can damn well. Do it for Rock, for Cena Ryback. You can damn sure do it there. And I think anybody watching this review would agree that you can do it. I mean, how do you think that live crowd's going to respond when that match happens? Which will probably be before the steel cage match. How do you think it's going to respond? Exactly. It's going to be 50-50, probably a little more in favor of Ryback, and we'll probably say about 50, we'll say 60-40 is what it's going to be. 60% more in favor of Ryback, or 55% more in favor of Ryback, and 40-45% to 45 in favor of Cena. That's how it's going to be. End of story. So again, though, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I know... I mean, it seems what they're doing with Ryback is the same thing they've done with CM Punk. They've done, they've been doing it with Lesnar on occasions. Basically, they're trying to create some kind of a heelish character, a heelish tweener character that's trying to put the realness, the realityness, into into the WWE. Basically, the legitimacy into the company. Basically, saying like, hey, look. I don't have to be someone that sell, comes out here and sells DVDs and wears different t-shirts and all that. I'm just someone that comes out, gets, comes out to this ring, gets in the ring, has a match, kicks ass in the match, beats my opponent, and then leaves, and that's it. You know, nothing more. No posing, nothing like that. So, I mean, I understand they're trying to find the person that's going to fit that character, but you cannot continuously give the same gimmick to somebody else to try to find who fits it more. Or fits it the best. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they seem to be doing with Ryback. I, I, I just don't understand that. Honestly, I don't. I just don't understand it. You know, and this is supposed to be a rivalry. It's probably going to end with at the new pay-per-view payback in, in June. I, again, I just, I just don't get it. I just don't understand it, folks. I, I really don't. I really don't. I mean... Hell, it would make more sense that if you're going to have two members of the Shield challenge for the tag titles at Extreme Rules, you should have at least one of those members challenge John Cena for the title. It would make sense. You know, at least you could say, at least you could promote the fact that he would be the Shield. You know, that could, on the, he, you could promote the fact that he you would have the Shield on the verge of probably having the greatest night of all time. By not only walking out with the tag titles, but having one of them walk out with the WWE title. I mean, what makes more sense? I ask you. I don't know, but anyway. That's still the question that's coming out of Raw for the second week in a row. Why? You know, and I have to agree, it just doesn't make sense. But unless they do something that's really going to get right back over as a heel to the point that he's going to get booed right out of the building. Worse than Cena? It ain't going to work. And the question is, again, I hate, I have to ask this, is how long is it going to last? Now, like I said, the two matches of the night to me was Ziggler and Jericho in the six-man tag featuring the re return to Monday Night Raw 
or uh, in ring return of Mon to Monday Night Raw of The Undertaker. And I have to say both were very good. Both got the equivalent amount of time. Um, I know some people might be pissed off that Ziggler, yeah, he won the match, and a lot of fans are going to be happy about that, but I'm pretty sure they're pissed off at the fact that the only way he won was to help continue another feud between Jericho and Fandango. So basically, even in victory, his match with Jericho was just to help him advance Jericho's storyline with Fandango. And I'm sure not a lot of fans are going to be happy about that. But still, it was a decent match, one of probably the best the best match of the night, along with the six-man tag. And the six-man tag, yeah, it is kind of disappointing that, you know, here you had the opportunity of finally putting the shield down, giving them a major loss, because let's face it, anytime Raw goes overseas and they have a, a match like this featuring someone like The Undertaker involved, or having someone like The Undertaker involved in it, usually you want to have Taker go over. Someone like Undertaker and his teammates go over. But it was surprising to have the shield go over, and... I guess it is the best decision because it helps really build them up as being legitimate main adventures, legitimate threats, and we'll just have to see and see what happens from there. And uh, but I don't think the situation with Taker and the Shield's over. I, I really don't. But hey, probably the best. It probably was the best decision to help to allow them to um, go over Taker and and Kane and Daniel Bryan tonight. So. But the good thing is, the positive thing is, Taker didn't take the pinfall. He took the loss of part of the team, but he didn't take the pinfall. That's the good thing. And I have to say, Taker looked good tonight. He did old school. He took a massive spear from Roman Reigns. Still got up. Kicked out of that. You know, did his leg drop. Did his flying clothesline. Guy looked like he could. He can still go. So I think that's what they're going to probably be doing until CM Punk comes back or something like that. You know, just having him probably appear on occasions when they need him to. And speaking of CM Punk, um, again, they talked with, they started Raw off with, uh, with Paul Heyman, basically Paul Heyman saying that Triple H wasn't there, but in fact Triple H was, basically, storyline-wise, Triple H basically played Heyman by lying to him in an email, and basically saying that he does accept the match with less known as Steel Cage at Extreme Rules. And by putting the exclamation point on it, by pedigreeing Paul Heyman <laughs> after he said yes to the match. So, that's, that's uh, so again, you know, we're getting this match because in reality, let's face it, we're not getting Cena Rock 3 at Extreme Rules. So, you know, there's that. And, uh... Again, you know, the rest of Raw was okay. I mean, you kind of had like a split, a fifty, a split night with, for ton, for the teams of tons of funk, tons of funk and, and road scholars. You had on one end, you had Damian Sandow beat, Brodus Clay, and on the other, you had Tenzai beating, uh, Cody Rhodes. So that kind of was like a split night for both teams. Uh, you had R Truth beat Antonio, and it looks like R Truth is bringing back his What's Up gimmick. So that's okay. So it looks like it's good. I, I enjoyed that. Um, let's, let's see, you also had a Divas Battle Royal, uh, five Diva Battle Royal, apparently it was supposed to be seven, but I guess, storyline-wise, due to the fact that the Bellas used Twin Magic last week to beat Caitlyn, they got themselves disqualified from participating, so, and AJ did win, I'll give him credit for having AJ do the Play the Possum deals, I'll give him credit there. And it might be an intriguing match between her and Caitlyn, Caitlyn down the line. Hopefully it's not next week, but they hold off until at least Extreme Rules to do this. Because if this is a feud they want to build up on, in the Divas Division, they want to make this the marquee feud in the Divas Division, then wait to Extreme Rules and have some kind of stipulation that, like, maybe if AJ loses, she ends up in a straitjacket. Um, but overall, Raw was okay. Crowd helped it out a lot. But again, the whole Ryback Cena deal, I just, again, like everybody else, I just don't get why Ryback has to be the heel. Why can't they just do babyface, babyface? But comment below, let me know what you guys thought of Raw, and I'll talk to you all later.